Hey, what's up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We're gonna differentiate between physical and chemical changes, physical and chemical properties, and intensive and extensive properties. Now, if that sounds vaguely familiar to a previous video, that's because it is. We're gonna break it down a little bit differently though, and we're gonna focus on one property of materials in particular. So numero uno, we are first going to define intensive property, which we should already have a general introduction to. Two, we should explain how intensive properties can be used to determine the identity of a substance. Numero tres, we're going to recognize that density is an intensive property and be able to calculate density. Finally, manipulate that density formula to solve for either mass or volume. Okay, so first, density is an intensive physical property that relates the ratio of volume to mass. Now, I love density, and every single time that I talk about density, I always like to bust out my density bling. This was given to me by some of my favorite students my very first year teaching. As you can tell, it's this emerald crusted chain, pure platinum medallion, and sapphire encrusted formula. Oops. How can we use density to help me figure out whether the $80,000 the students told me they spent on this thing was worth it? Okay, so here is your formula for density, and you'll be provided with this on your formula chart. Mass divided by volume. Now to better understand the density formula, I like to think of density of a material in its three different phases. I've pulled equal volumes of different phases of the same substance. So my volume value is gonna be the same in each case. However, notice in the solid, generally speaking, we're able to pack more mass, more stuff in that same amount of volume. My numerator value vastly increases. However, in a gas, that same volume, there's far less stuff packed into that same amount of space. Density, a ratio between the mass and the volume. Now, the derived units for density are typically grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter, although they can be any mass per volume unit. These are the ones you are most often going to see in class. Now, recognize that those are equivalent quantities. Cubic centimeters and milliliters are the same volume. In other words, if I had a one by one by one cube, filled it completely with water, and dumped it into a graduated cylinder, I would get one milliliter of volume. Now, density is a characteristic intensive property of a substance, and therefore we can use it to help identify a substance. So let's take a look at this magic mysterious substance. I'm gonna take two equal volumes of that exact same substance. Boom, two equal volumes. Because it's the exact same substance in the same phase, the mass and volume values are the same. Therefore, the density is also the same. And it doesn't matter whether I had a small amount or a large amount of the substance, the density will always be the same for that given substance. The ratio of mass to volume will always be the same for a given substance in a given phase. Intensive property. And we can then use it to help identify what material we're working. Now, lastly, a lot of times you're gonna be asked to compare densities in class. And you might be submerging one thing in another. So you need to recognize that an object will float if its density is less than the density of the fluid that it's placed in. And typically, the fluid that we're gonna be dropping a bunch of things in is water and the density of water is one gram per milliliter. And that density is one you should commit to memory. So as you take a look at your screen there, you've got a couple of styrofoam packing peanuts with a density of 0.05 grams per milliliter. Will it float in water? Answer, yes! Its density is less than one gram per milliliter. Oil, will it float in water? Density, 0.858 grams per milliliter. Answer, yes. Why? Its density is less than the density of water. Bars of aluminum, density 2.7 grams per milliliter. Will it float in water? Answer, no. Nine, nicked, no. No, because its density is greater than the density of water. All right, and that finishes up for the introduction to density. As always, check out the links beneath the video. Have a fantastic day.